are. <laughs> Happy Friday, Friday morning. The top of the morning to you, Bill Nolan. It's a beautiful morning. It's been a beautiful week, actually. Um, actually, it's been a crazy week. Crazy yeah. week. Uh, but you know what? We're on the balls of our feet. We're poised yes. and positioned to um, spin and pivot and turn. And and so I kind of – every time something crazy happens, which I think it was – tell me tell me if you heard this too. Uh, my son called me. He said, Dad, he goes, I, I, I heard that uh, uh, there's supposed to be two satellites that are supposed to crash tonight. That was last night. I have not night. heard that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you serious? <laughs> that's what he, that's what he said, and, and it's funny. I mean, most of the time, he'd be going, "What? That's crazy!" And then he'd go, like, "Oh, wait, wait, I forgot. I forgot what you were in." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's it's funny, like, funny, you know, right? So the fact that we're actually here, and hi Nahad, hi Samuel. Yeah, hi guys. The, the fact that we're the fact that we're even able to be here means, oh, I guess they didn't crash and blow up the internet. So it's like, great. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I tell you what, folks, honestly, Bill and I have chances to chat through the week and, uh, you know, just, we have our friend time and then we do our show time together. And uh, t this week has been so busy for both of us that we are talking right now. <laughs> this is our catch up time and our hello time. And we haven't you know, talked all week. <laughs> Yeah, it's been crazy for both of us, but we're here. I'm glad that we're able to get together this morning and share some things. Hey, look there, Samuel. My friend Bill Durs is uh, saying hello. Hello, Bill. Hey, it's Bill. good to be with us this day. Um, and by the way, I will mention that I just had a call um, with a friend in, in Australia before the show here, and her name is Janelle. Mm -hmm. And Janelle is a fan of Bill Dolan, uh, and she happens to fortunately be a fan of Matt Crump too, but she wanted to mention because it's bedtime in Australia right now. She wanted it to is. Hello to Bill Dolan from Janelle. I sent Janelle and a bunch of a bunch of my friends over in Australia and New Zealand um, a little love note last night, basically talking about differentiation, the power of differentiation. Mm -hmm. And so specifically for Janelle and you and, and, and uh, a lot of the folks that are down under or, or basically across the international time zone, I, I post around 9-ish, 10-ish this time so that you can have something uh, in the morning. So hopefully that was valuable last night. Or, oh, yeah. I bet you it was. It was I'm morning. sure it is. Yeah. I'm sure it is. There's The interesting thing, even talking with Janelle, and I have a lot of friends around the world, as you do as well, but um, – you know, when you when you talk to folks, even though they might be 15 hours difference in time, there you know, there's no way you're walking to her house. So it's just like the problems, the situation, circumstances are the same. Oh, they right? really are. And, I mean, and you start and, same, same junk. And you, and you start thinking about. Uh, oh, by the way, Marcella, my cat decided to join us for this morning hey, broadcast. Yeah, she it's just does. That might be a cool. Italian dish. It's not. It's uh. Well, it might no. be a Korean dish. I mean, they like cats too, but I don't know. Sorry. No, 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 no. Yeah, don't go there. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Won't go there. So we got some stuff to cover. You know, uh, uh, you know, I I want to get into some of the meaty stuff. I mean, you and I could banter for for months, but yes. the thing that we we started out uh, with you is a lot of the stuff that you're teaching in your courses, in your coaching, which I think is like crazy valuable that really everybody's heard the term of unconscious competence and we've heard the term um, unconscious incompetence and the gap between people that just don't know what they know and the idea that know so much they still don't know it <laughs> but, <laughs> right. but the bottom line is there's been a transition in terms of your gifting and this is kind of what i talked about even last night that when you start talking about your dif differentiation and i um, I would say that still, I, I I tip my hat to our friend David Breyer, who is ranked as the number one Google uh, branding expert, and I partner yeah, with him a lot on of projects. Too. I saw him like in in all kinds of great. I thought like he's like a he's an Avenger now. He's he's oh yeah yeah he's he's really expanding his his <laughs> repertoire. He's doing yeah. a little bit of work. Yeah. You know, but he talks about branding being the art of differentiation. And I, and I made a point of emphasizing that last night is that there's there's a, a, a difference in all of us and a uniqueness. And sometimes that temptation to to want to fit in and you know, we don't want to stand out and whatever. But if you don't stand out, 
you don't have differentiation. And if you don't stand out and you don't have differentiation, your organization is going to struggle. Your marketing is going to struggle. Your business is going to struggle. And so to have the courage to go on this journey, to go from unconscious incompetence to conscious competence to unconscious competence and to move in that, but to move into it in your authenticity and to go through that process to discover that is not only good business, it's good branding, it's good yeah. marketing, it's good communication. And if I can say, it celebrates you. Absolutely. And that's so important to take a breath and it takes courage. It really does. But to yeah, say, I, I who are to, you? Uh, I don't remember if it was Diane in Australia. Um, might have been her or one of my other connections, but I saw it yesterday talking about authenticity, which a lot of people will discuss and talk about. It's a it's a key word that people you know throw out there a bunch lately. Yeah. I do as well. Yeah. Um, but authenticity doesn't necessarily mean that you you come on on social media and say, you know, I was in the bathroom for 25 minutes this morning and I had a really bad problem with my bowels. It, I don't know if I'm going to feel better today. Maybe y'all can help me out. Okay. You don't have to be that like authentic in the sense that you tell everybody all your, your stuff, right? I mean, there's some, there's times and places for everything, but it is more of a position. It's a place, it's mindset, a place where you're willing to be a bit more transparent and real instead mm -hmm. of like, uh, you know, like the, hello, Matt, I noticed you are a coach and consultant CEO founder. I would love to connect with you. Okay. That's not authentic. That's not well, authentic. Oh, well, even, even worse. I got, I, I got something the other day that says, since you're interested in plumbing and home improvements. <laughs> I've got that too. It's like, what are you talking about? I do, I, do, I, do, I do. I'm interested in plumbing. I want to make yeah. sure when I hit the little thing, it works. But I mean, that's about as far as it goes. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, the thing that when we start talking about authenticity, the thing that I talk that I try to impress on people, and and I don't, I'll try to get off my soapbox in one minute. Okay, so I'm saying this with love, everybody. <laughs> Is this? Oh, Gene. Hey, buddy, how you doing? This Gene morning? Barely, <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing a flyby on flight school. Here's the deal, I like the master, the master of webinars and communications. Oh, you are so oh, good, Gene. He started out, and now all of a sudden, you know, he's just him saying, "How? What do you think about this?" Now he's got like a million things going on. He's, he's a rock all, star, total amazing, rock star. Amazing. So amazing. the thing about authenticity is, is this: mm -hmm. is that when you hear people say, "Oh, it's all about," mm, it's all about. That's a bunch of crap because nothing's all about. There isn't. There, we work in a world where things work together in harmony. And so one of the things that works in harmony is the authenticity. In other words, being who your authentic self is. But if you're going to be communicating to anybody other than yourself, you have to think about what words and actions and behaviors am I going to exhibit in a manner that brings blessing and encouragement to people? So in other yeah. words, when you run it through that filter to recognize that like what Matt and I are doing is not only, hey, this is for our benefit. This is hopefully we pray as a gift to you. So the words we're going to share with you this morning in the next 20 so minutes are designed to be a gift. So I'm not going to talk about plumbing. I'm not going to talk about all these other things. I, I guess Matt could bring up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to go there i won't do it i promise i promise yeah. it could be fun though <laughs> yeah it could be fun yeah we'll pick up I a whole different and audience and there for that one yikes and uh, yeah Come together in perfect. that started going through my mind when you talk about harmony i was like oh my lord it's happening. so I let's tee you up my friend here we go teaching from the fifth gear your first diagram talking about unconsciously incompetent, which we know people in that place. And sometimes we are in that place in different areas of our life. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff that's there I'm unconscious of. Guess what? Someday I'll figure it out and then I'll share it with you. <laughs> then it moves to consciously incompetent. Say, I need to work on this. To consciously competent. Now you have started to master that area. To unconsciously competent. You just work in that groove. But the thing you talked about, Matt, was the fifth gear. It's moving in that place. And what does it take for you to learn to get into that fifth gear? And how do you apply that? And uh, that's me teeing you up so that you can do a little review and, and we can hit on the, the next subject. Because 
got folks, if you're listening to this, I really want you to listen to this because sometimes it just doesn't fall in front of you. You know, right. it, sometimes you have to wisdom. Sometimes it's something you have to dig for like Ooh. treasure. Yeah. And yeah. so for that reason, listen to this. Cause I, I, I Matt, I know you're going to give us some shovels and tell us where to dig. So my friend, take it away. Man, I better be good today. <laughs> I mean, really, you better be good. Yeah, that's horrible. If I'm not tearing up like in five minutes. I know it's either going to be great or it's a boom. <laughs> It'd be awesome. So, all right. So just to kind of catch folks up, obviously we are on, uh, as you can see in the title, today is episode 008. We're on episode eight of Flight School. What, what? So excited about it, which also means there are seven previous episodes and uh, I think the episode number two is where we really started digging into the fifth gear. Uh, so if you'd like to catch up, uh, you can for sure go back through episodes two through uh, today uh, and follow up on that. Instead of having to dig around like crazy on LinkedIn, if you're a LinkedIn follower with like like I am. Uh, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a free version of your coaching. It is, it is. Your coaching is really what it is. Yeah. It is. And uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And I'm, I'm glad to do it. Um, I do have a, a playlist set up on my YouTube channel that is specifically set up for flight school. So you'll be able to easily go to all of our episodes there uh, for more information. Feel free to reach out. All right. So um, bottom line is there are some things we're saying today that are way ahead of where we've been. Uh, if this is your first time jumping in, would love to catch you up. All right. But for today, uh, we've gone from identifying these. We're talking about uh, places of a of conscious competence of your unconscious competence. So that thing you do, your superpower, your mojo, your what makes you you, that when you're in overdrive, autopilot, whatever, that thing, that if somebody would ask you, hey, how do you do that? You're like, well, I just, no, I kind of do it. Or maybe it's like, you know, you have somebody you're trying to work with and they're supposed to do a part of what you do, but you're saying, you know, if it's, it would take me longer to explain to you how to do this than if I just did it. So I'm just going to do it. Right, because you could do it so well so easily. Doesn't mean that was really good for the other person because you didn't train anybody or share something with somebody. So to be able to dig into that unconscious competence in your own life, extract that superpower, and then empower other people to do that is is way better than just an ebook or a course or some something like that. This is just giving them the power to do the thing you do. That's what the fifth gear is about uh, for other people as well as for yourself when you're going to be able to examine some things in your autopilot that you're not aware of in most cases, you might find out, man, that's really freaking good. I need to really work on scaling that up. That's a good, it's good thing. And you might say in some cases, this is horrible. I don't need to do this anymore. I should cut this out. So it's a great place for this tool to find that. So in identifying through some of the tools we've shared previously, you're going to be able to identify what that is in your unconscious competencies. And now we're in the state of learning what your unconscious competence really is. And I've been able to share that with you all in, in this uh, tool that I have inside of the fifth gear, which is uh, the eight cognitive skills, right? So this is kind of a checklist in your life to pull apart some of those things that are happening inside of your own personal unconscious competence. And you could also use this in your business as well, right? So uh, we have been through the past uh, four already, sustained attention, response inhibition, speed of information processing, and cognitive flexibility and control. Sounds like a lot of big words, uh, but we've broken it down pretty easily over the past few weeks. Sustained attention is really where you have the ability to look and listen at things. You've got tasks in front of you and you, you're able to handle certain things in certain places. Your response inhibition is your ability to shut out things. Like when you're focused on a project and somebody comes barreling through the door and, and maybe two people are having a conversation and you're trying to get something done and they're talking over there, but you can still block it out and move into what you're doing, right? That's a, that response inhibition. Uh, and it could go in many different areas, but we've talked about that in past episodes. Number three, speed of information processing. I know I'm talking fast, but again, you can follow back up on this. But speed of information processing, how fast can you process incoming information? Like what is Matt doing to you right now? Right? How fast can you process these things that I'm saying? Yes, 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 it's flying by. And some folks can say, got it, Matt, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Some other folks saying, wait a second, I'm trying to write notes. I can't keep up. What am I going to do? And right? that's so why I, there's a playback option, folks. That's a great playback <laughs> feature. That's absolutely right. And you can get our notes uh, today as well. If you're ever interested in anything we've got, I forgot to put this thing up here. Where is it? that uh, ding, ding, ding. 
Uh, there we go. If you ever want that, you can come to flight school online at gmail.com, a little commercial, and uh, I'll be happy to send you these notes anytime. All right. So then uh, for no charge, that's free. Right? No charge. It is absolutely free. That's right. It might cost you maybe some cat food for the for the cat over there. Maybe I know. Pop. Marcella needs love. Yeah. What does Marcella like to eat? Yeah. What she like dry food or, or wet food? Uh, it's always a mix because it's healthier for their bowels. Oh, speaking of bowels, we had yeah, that conversation. Yeah, just so you know, for the baby cat, yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, so number four, cognitive flexibility and control. That's the ability of the what and how. So we talked about last week, which was a great episode. Uh, the what and how you think about change. Like, what do you think about change? How do you handle change when it comes into your life? I'm doing this, this, and this. Somebody comes and says, no, we're doing it this way. <laughs> you either go, well, screw you. That's not the way I'm going to do it. This is the way we've been doing it. I'm going to do it. No, I'm not going to do that. Right. How do you handle change when it comes into your life uh, in, in fast ways, slow ways, anyway, right? That's an area that you're examining in your life. And then we're moving into uh, number five here. Well, I think we actually did that last week too. Number mm -hmm. five, it's multitasking, a word that many of us are used to hearing. And a lot of us that are watching today, especially here, our friends on LinkedIn um, are in some cases, pretty good at multitasking. You might be a really good pro, like the multitasker pro, it says here, you can move attention and effort back and forth between or uh, two or more activities when engaged. So you're really good at doing these things. Maybe you might not be as good as you think you are, right? So you might start finding out certain things about your multitasking that aren't healthy and or find some things about your multitasking that are fantastic. Um, so we, we talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Number six here, working memory. This isn't just remembering something. It's remembering it long enough until the task is completed on the notepad of your mind. You're mm -hmm. in a place, you're in a meeting with somebody, a crowded restaurant, and some stuff's going on. Uh, your friend Joe steps up to the table and says, hey, how you doing, Matt? How you doing, Bill? Blah, blah, blah. What are you guys talking about? Oh, we're talking about the fifth gear. And blah, blah, blah. You know, I had a, I, that's a great thing. I have an idea about that. As a matter of fact, I would love to, to put that together in a package and share it with the world. And I've got a website that we do this and this on. And we can do this and this and do that. What do you think about doing that? That's a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. All right. So then you go back to your meeting, Matt and Bill. And then two days later, you even forgot that Joe was at the table. <laughs> it's just like... Mm -hmm. I, so <laughs> who's Joe? Joe what? what who's Joe? Joe Mama. Mama. Oh, you baby me yeah. do it. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're old. We're old people. It's an old, yeah, it's an old it's Joe. An old oh, Joe, Joe Mama. <laughs> so in working memory, it's that place to be able to remember things. And I, I'll be honest with you. I have an absolutely horrifically horrible memory. It takes a lot of work for me to do those things. I, I have to work off of notes. When I speak, I have to have an outline or notes in front of me because I I can't, I, I write music. You know, I'm a singer songwriter and I've got hundreds and hundreds of songs. Um, I can't begin to tell you the first three lines of any song I've ever written in my life. I just can't, I can't remember them. I can sing it a million times, just not there. Um, yeah, I did a lot of drugs, a lot of problems in my past. You know, I've got some of that issue going on there. <laughs> He's got problems with got memories. Problems. They just aren't there anymore. Oh, yeah. and I'm on a bunch of meds now and narcotics. And uh, and I've got a squirrel brain where I'm thinking about a thousand things at a time. And there are methods to bring that thing down to earth. However, yeah. at the end of the day, um, we've got some folks that are fantastic with that. Some folks that aren't. So, Bill. No, 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 stop, just for a second. As you went down I this list, these, these are these cognitive skills, <laughs> right? Just contextualize them for the fifth gear. These are the cognitive skills that help people assess and move into the fifth gear, correct? Absolutely. Just boom, 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 working. Okay, great. Working memory on six. How many more do we have? We have seven and. Yeah, we got seven, eight. Eight. Uh, yep. Ooh, good, good, good. Because I think we're, we're going to dig dig into those probably probably next week or at least part of it. Okay, ask me anything. I'm here yeah, for yeah. you, buddy. All right, yeah, because we got five minutes left in the show today, folks. Okay. Can you believe it or not? It's gone that fast. And that's just some review and catch up. All right, so when it comes down to working memory, because um, you've got some fantastic things that you were able to accomplish in your life, folks, if you could have listened to the episode where we talked about tasks versus appointments, that has just been Amazing. A lot of people still talking about it, but um, I can't even remember what episode it was. Appointments right? versus tasks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Do, there's no such thing as tasks. No, it's really fantastic. Right. All right. 
But when it comes down to working memory, because uh, you have a lot of things that are thrown at you, you've got a lot of uh, your business is task oriented. There's so many, uh, well, appointment oriented, but mm-hmm. you have a lot of things that happen with a lot of different people and moving parts inside of spirit media. Um, so there's a lot of things to remember. Uh, I would dare say much of it's written down in front of you, but there are some things that fly by you. Um, yeah. how, are you how are you able to, and this, again, we're talking about a conscious competence, right? We're now in a position of knowing something, looking into mm-hmm. your unconscious competence. So we're just doing an example of how to unpack your unconscious competence in this one particular area. Looking at your unconscious competence, how you handle things right now, how you're working with things right now, how are you able to 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 maintain your working memory? Like somebody says, hey, Bill, my number is 876-954-3542. And you don't have a pen or a napkin or something there, right? I mean, how do you handle that working memory in in your own life? Well, the the truth is I'd love to tell you that, um, you know, we do have in our memory, like short-term memory, and a lot of times that's for phone numbers. So if it's 503-999 or whatever, like those types of things. and those things are repeated so that that works. But <clears throat> I'm a big believer in systems. Earlier in one of the shows, we talked about the idea, knowing there's going to be a lot of information that's passed at you and come your way from a lot of different sources, uh, yeah. intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, bing, 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 coming at you, is setting up systems and processes in your own mind and heart to be able to, re- uh, to receive, process, and distribute receive, process, and distribute. And so every bit of information that comes at me, I have to decide, am I the one to take action for it? And I need to honor that process because I don't want to be the one that goes, oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Because when you say, oh, I forgot, it's not saying, oh, I have a bad memory. You're saying I have a bad system, Mm. which paste a blanket over every perception of you as a person and a business person. Because if you go, I forgot about this, how do I know you're not going to forget about that? So part of the quality of your brand and the delivery of your deliverables, if you will, is going to be based upon your ability to process information and to prove every day that you have systems in place that aren't built on excuses, but are built on reliable processes to get things done. Yeah. And so in that particular case, you say, well, how do I memorize uh, memorize things? I really don't. So Mm -hmm. I either write it or I'll say that's insignificant information. Thanks. And I will dismiss it or I will distribute it to someone who should be taking care of it. It's those three. Take it, absorb it, make an appointment to handle it. Dismiss it or distribute it to someone, delegate it to someone that should be taking care of that. That's do you do my that day. Do you do that on the fly, Bill? Or because you said write it, obviously. So that means even if you're delegating, you have to write it to this remember. This baby or- right here, hate to say, but I am like this baby right here. It goes into my appointments. If you're saying, okay, I put the appointment in. This is what I have to do. And if there's notes attached to it, I go into the notes section and I, Every project I have is listed by client and project name. So I immediately can go to my notes and I'll, we have that system, by the way, it's called a naming protocol Mm -hmm. because the, the idea of writing stuff down is a great step. But if all you do is write stuff down, but you have an inability to, to extract that information again, and then utilize it, you have a broken system. So to do that well, we actually have a naming protocol. And, and, and so when something's happening, even in my mind, I'm thinking, which client is this? Which project is this? And then what is the action? I do it, dismiss it, or I, dis- or I delegate it. That process, boom, 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 boom. So it's going on my head. And by the way, a lot of that, it wasn't because I took some master class because I am a squirrel chaser, like squirrel chasers can be. I'm champion. I've got trophies. <laughs> but I was a live television director and I still direct live programming now in the virtual event for corporations and nonprofits. And what it means is I've had to set up my mind to be able to receive and process data instantly. 
Now, all of us do, but the idea is that becoming a great processor is like becoming a great runner. You oh, do yeah. it with training, repetition, and building up. And a lot of people say, oh, that's too much stress. Well, guess what? It is stressful. It is hard. But if the point you get to something, you go, oh, that's hard, and you stop, guess what? You're never going to grow. You're never going to get good at that skill of processing. And if it's multitasking, you'll never get good at it because you'll stop at hard. But just like going to the gym, there's a difference between the stress that builds muscle and the stress that destroys muscle. Mm -hmm. And that distinction for you to say, what will build me and strengthen me, even though it's hard, or what is going to destroy me is something you're going to have to learn about yourself to discern. But that's really the process, Matt, is developing that skill set so that I can absorb information quickly, process it, and put it into action or dismiss it. That's, mm -hmm. that's boom, the process. Well, that's amazing. Um, I would assume that that's something that's not happened in the past couple of weeks in your life. Oh, <laughs> no, it, 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 it has. And here's, here's the challenge, honestly, is that you and I, we love doing the show, but this is one of those things. It's a gift to our audience. And so as we look at those things, okay, when can I do this? It's, uh, 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 uh. it's sometimes there's some things that do fall off the radar or, and I'll just say this, if there's a lot of stuff that consistently falls off your radar, all our folks at home, it's either because you're procrastinating or it is you're showing in terms of urgency where it falls on the list. Yeah. And Things will fall on the list, especially if things are deadline driven and mission critical. I think both Matt, Matt and I are here as a commitment because we we love each other. We love being able to offer this program as a resource and we love you. We really do. We want to say if you can take a nugget that's going to make a difference in your life. That's why we're here. Well, and it would have been really easy to scrub today and do a post of some sort or whatever, um, you know, super simple. Um, but yeah, you're right. We're both committed and uh, there's still folks that are here today and folks are watching the replay, obviously. And that's really part of what we're talking about here with, with engaging these areas in the fifth gear, right? We both made a commitment to do something. And although there are some circumstances that would make it easier not to, uh, at certain points you say, uh, I'm going to, right? And that's not a have to, it's a get to. Both of us mm -hmm. get to do this, not have to do this. It could be a have to, but because of what we're talking about today, what we've been talking about, um, there's some places in our lives that create space for us to be able to do these things. And uh, as we've been talking about today with working memory, a place of where you're able to, to you know, remember things and or share things or delegate things, uh, you shared uh, some great examples. And in that aspect of something, something as simple as having your cell phone and creating a note or an appointment for yourself, um, I think appointment uh, terminology fits well here. You can set an appointment for the memory you're supposed to be retaining. And in that memory of that appointment, because you're going to forget what it's about, you write in the notes section, um, tell Matt about this on Tuesday at the next meeting or share this with Susie, who is in charge of this department, right? Whatever. And that way, when it flags you on your phone, it pops back up on the day you said to and pops up at the time you said to, you're like, oh yeah, thank you. Okay. So by the way, Matt or Sally, I've got this for you, right? And those three things you mentioned, because we've got a call to action today for folks. We have, we like to try to provide you a call to action at the end of every show on Fridays. And we're at that point um, because you've got the weekend. And um, this is a great opportunity to do something through the weekend, for your own life, processing this one part of the fifth gear in the eight cognitive skills. Um, is how you handle memory in your life. And do you have a system? And those three things that you found that were important in a memory to share were what again, Bill? Oh, it, I mean, how I process yeah. is it, receive it, receive process it. it, and either dismiss it, make an appointment to do it, or delegate it. Delegate it's that it. simple. Yeah. That's those simple. It's are. triage. It's really, it's, it's time right. triage. Which is fantastic. So, folks, if that is something that you want to adopt into your life, then 
rewind and, and write those things down and start applying that into your life, right? And or if you've got something that is working in your life and you just haven't been paying attention to it or you'd like to expand upon that, uh, take some of the stuff we've been talking about and tweak it a bit. It's fantastic. That's your call to action this weekend. How are you handling memory in your life? And do you have a system? Um, because if you do, it's going to make things much easier for you. It's going to make things happen better. And other people are going to be better for it as well. Um, it's going to help other people by getting things accomplished or them accomplishing something that they're better at than you're at, right? So yeah. what's that look like for you in your own life? That's your call to action today. How, how are you really handling your memory in your life? And do you have a system? Um, if you don't, start writing one down. If you do, write it down and examine it. Say, is this really working properly? Amen. Hey, so man. on behalf of my friend, Matt, and myself, I want to thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Flight School and uh, put this into action. And we'll see you yeah, next week. Absolutely, folks. We appreciate you. Thanks so much for being here. And for sure, don't forget, we're here every Friday, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. 1030 Eastern, 730 in the morning on the Pacific Coast. And wherever you're at in the world, I have to Google the time, whatever time, whatever time it is now. Right, <laughs> but right, right. it's not my time. So check it out, 1030 or 730. Until the next time, we love you. Thanks for being here at Flight School. You come to the hangar where we've been learning to ground some things in our lives. So eventually we can fly high. Each week, Bill and I bring you episodes to help you get and stay grounded in your business and your life with lessons that help you fly higher heights and know exactly what your flight plan is. Join us each week on Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern and 7.30 a.m. Pacific Time. Welcome to Flight School.